So when I began making videos showing how to create 3D assets for the Apple Vision Pro, I kept getting the same question. How realistic does it look? So in this video, we're gonna be diving into that and we're gonna be doing so because what that question is asking is actually how real are the surface qualities of the object? Does the object actually look like wood or like metal or like glass or like plastic? And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be diving into the individual components that make up those material qualities and really unpacking like how realistic we can get inside the Apple Vision Pro. So for this video, I created several variations of my all-time favorite test character, and that's Matt. Matt is the default character that ships with most of the Substance 3D products, and I just love using him because it's a cute little character, he's got some curvature, he's got some detail to him, and it allows you to really kind of test what we're looking at. So for these tests, I made him look like a variety of things. I made him look like soft plastic, glass, shiny metal. Even in one example, I sculpted him out of wire. I chose these materials because they are going to be testing some of the technical components that make up the surface qualities of a 3D object. So before we can really dive into the results, we need to look at the individual components that build together to give a 3D object its surface qualities. To begin, let's take a look at the PBR shading system that goes into creating these objects. So PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering, and it's a system of creating these surface qualities out of a bunch of individual components that all combine together to mimic what is happening in the real world. There can be a lot of these individual components, but the basic ones are going to be very straightforward. There's base color, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It is the surface color of that object. Then there's roughness, how matte versus how smooth and shiny this surface is. There's metalness, and this is usually a binary because objects are generally either metal or they're not. So if it's metal, it goes to one. Everything else, whether it's wood or skin or glass, it all goes to zero. Then there are height or normal information that gives the micro details of a 3D surface. So these are like the little bumps, little indentions, the things that kind of give the object that kind of tactile quality to them. On top of those basic ones, there are some more that you should know about for our testing purposes today. First off, there's opacity for the wire mesh one. This one tells the object where there are things and where there's no things, right? So when there's an opacity there, it says, you know, there's nothing there. You can just completely bypass it and go straight through it. Additionally, there's translucency, which is slightly different. This is more for like glass materials. So within translucency, you can get things like absorption color. You can create some IOR, which is how the light refracts around inside the space. Then there is displacement, which is similar to height in that it adds the micro detail to the surface, but displacement goes a step further and it actually changes the geometry where height and normals is more of an optical illusion. Then there's subsurface scattering. This is a simulation of light scattering once it hits the surface of an object. This usually comes up when you see light shining through an object. Think of the way that light interacts with your ear or like a gummy bear or like a Lego when there's a bright light source behind it. Then there's emission. This is light actually emitting out of the object through the surface quality. So think of a glowing light bulb or a firefly or something along those lines. There are more options than just what we're going to be looking at today, but these are the basic ones and will get you 99% of the materials and surface qualities that you're going to want to create. So the idea is that by creating all these different materials, we can actually test how the Apple Vision Pro is handling each individual component. You might be thinking, wait, why couldn't the Apple Vision Pro just handle all of them? I've seen amazing 3D visuals. Maybe I've watched Avatar Way of the Water and I've seen all this incredible stuff happen. Why can't the Apple Vision Pro give me what I've seen in films and in animation and things like that? Well, the Apple Vision Pro works off of a type of renderer that's called a real-time renderer. It's similar to what you would see in a video game. The idea is that everything needs to calculate the moment that you look at it. So it needs to be light, it needs to be efficient. You don't have the luxury that you have in film and animation of taking 3D assets and all these individual components and applying long processing times and long rendering times. Like these turntables that I created took anywhere from like an hour and a half to upwards of eight hours just to get these 150 frame five second turntables 
because of the complexity that comes with these more advanced features. So real-time render engines like Apple's Metal needs to make some choices, right? It needs to decide like what's important, what isn't, what can I fake, what do I need to really process? Because the most important thing is creating a real-time experience for the user. So like I said, Apple uses its own rendering engine called Metal. And frankly, I don't know what Metal has been leaving in and what it strips out in order to make room for these efficiencies. And so that's what we're gonna be testing. The other thing that I'm curious about is how lighting is handled inside the Apple Vision Pro. So traditionally with 3D, lighting is either handled one of two ways. The first is adding 3D lights. This is more like a, think of a dark theater stage. You can add various lights to a scene to illuminate it in a specific way that you want. There are things like point lights and spotlights and area lights, and all these lights you can combine around the scene to give your object a specific look. Now this doesn't always work that well for real time situations because again, me, the person with the headset on, I can go anywhere. So having this like pre-baked lighting thing doesn't exactly work out too well. So instead a better system for real time render engines generally is HDRIs or image based lighting. So imagine an entire massive dome is surrounding the entire world they are living in. And an image gets put onto that dome and where that image is bright, that's a light source. So imagine it's the picture of a sky and there's a single really, really bright point. That's going to be the light source that illuminates the scene. And where it's dark or where it's colored, then you can get some colors. And this is really beneficial too, because then you can get reflections of an entire surrounding and it really, really helps generate more of an immersive world experience. So again, I'm not sure if Apple is pre-baking this world or it's actually looking at the world that I'm existing in in order to generate this lighting information. Okay, so now you have a basic understanding of both the material attributes we'll be looking at and the 3D lighting we're gonna be looking at. So let us jump into it now. All right, so I've got my 11 different meat mat characters all together on my dining room table inside the Apple Vision Pro. So I'm gonna be taking a look at each one of these to kind of get an idea of how they're looking. And I wanna start right there with you, my friend. I wanna get this pure metal one. I'm making them a little bit bigger just so we can see them. Cause I wanna see what's going on. Now, a few things I'm noticing. One, which is amazing, is I can actually see reflections of things in my environment. That is just bonkers. Like as I walk around here to the backside, I can see, um, you know, like these windows. I can see the little bits of my kids a uh, little play kitchen thing. And I can also, you know, again, see the, the living room over here to the side as well. Now you can see it refreshing. I'm not quite sure what it's refreshing or it's, I guess it's just like based on my movements or figuring it out. That's something I need to dive in a little bit deeper. Now, again, this is a perfectly pure reflection. So the, the low resolution that we're seeing is actually coming from the environment map, not from the reflections in the object itself. So something worth noting, but this blew me away. It blew me away that it's actually updating the environment that I'm in and, and, and working with that. So very, very cool. All right. All right, metal guy, I can make you a little bit smaller. Let's take a look at some other components. Now that blew me away. Also the opacity on this guy, totally working, right? I can see through him. I can see out the other side. I can see through to my menu. All very cool. It looks like, I, I think I left some kind of coat on this or something, which is why that's fitting them. But overall, the opacity is definitely working. Now, these guys are a little bit less successful. So we're gonna take a look at, this is the um, the plastic that was supposed to be so like having a subsurface quality that like that soft plastic -y kind of look. Um, and we're just not seeing that. Sorry, I talked too much with my hands and I'm gonna spin these things around more than we want to. Same thing with the emissive. So this is actually this, no, this is the glass one. This is the emissive one. Neither of those components are working. So emission, not no bueno. Uh, glass, a translucency also doesn't work. Again, not a super deal breaker, but whoa. Not a super deal breaker, but it definitely does it. This guy too. So this was showing more displacement when I was creating. So again, displacement, like, so this is, uh, height is, it appears like it's coming off of it. Displacement is actually displacing the geometry. And you can see up along here, and if I look down the side, you can see it's not actually popping out the way that it did in the render. So again, not a problem, but definitely something to be, be aware of. So those are some of the ones that didn't work. Some of the ones that did work really well, 
my goodness. Let's take a look at this guy. Look at this. So what I'm kind of getting out of this is that metal, roughness, matte materials, little bits of height variation, that it's only on the surface as a kind of a visual trick, really, really work well. Um, and it just it's, it's just looking like really robust and I can really get some fine detail in it. I think maybe my favorite one is this guy right here. Like, look at that uh, patterning in the wood. Like, really, really nice. Those, vis those visible lines, it's just, it's just working really, really well. Again, I think that guy might be my favorite. I also really like this fabric. Like, look at this. I just, like, it just feels fuzzy. And I, got, I know I got my weird, um, bad green screen outline. But, like, look at this, man. Like, that little micro detail. Like, that's the kind of stuff. And if you can get that... And, and you, it, it's really, really easy inside the Substance ecosystem to kind of uh, take some of their assets. And again, like this was just a drag and drop material I got from the asset library to really utilize it. And again, here's like some, it's like a simple little knit thing too. And again, I can just like, I can just feel it. It feels so much softer. But again, um, maybe I'm a nerd, but this guy, make him, this guy is definitely going to win out for me as, as the winner. So I'm just going to leave him nice and big here in the middle of my room and that's it so again end of the day i think that this is just like and again this is going to get better but there is enough here to really make some compelling looking visuals and really kind of again use this as an opportunity to, to tell some compelling stories with some characters with some immersive quality 3d objects that you can really take away from Okay, I want to just do one last test uh, before I close out. Now I'm looking up here at the light. And again, you can see one of the downsides of the Apple Vision Pro is that the uh, light values just kind of get clipped. But let's see, let's look at the top of this character. And if I shut this off, will that light source go away? Boom, it's gone. Wow, insanity. So there you go. That is taking a look at 3D assets inside the Apple Vision Pro and kind of evaluating how realistic they look using the metal renderer. And for me, for my takeaway, it's pretty dope. Like this is way better than I was expecting. Like they feel very tangible and they feel very realistic. Now, are there limitations? Absolutely. But in the 3D animated world, we had limitations back in the day. When Toy Story was created, there were extreme limitations. That's why they made a movie about plastic toys generally in one room. It's so they could control it, so they didn't have to do fur and they didn't have to do like skin and all that stuff. They could just be like hard plastics. Same thing with the Apple Vision Pro. The quality will get better. The real-time renderer will get better. But don't let that stop you because the reality is, is that it's good enough now to make some really compelling images and really compelling 3D assets inside the Apple Vision Pro. So just use your brain, use your creativity, take what's already there and make it look awesome. And hopefully we'll do that in some future videos and you'll get a better understanding of that as we go forward. All right, but until then, take care everyone.